practice exam question from 2005 in January. Uh, just going to have a quick go at it. It might uh, be a complete mess because of my. It's actually quite difficult to draw using this mouse. My hand starts hurting after a bit. Mm. Let's have a go. All right, so we're starting from here, and we'll label that zero. Then there are two things that can happen straight away. There's A, and there's B. Both of those can come straight out of there. So there's A, and there's B. I'm just going to tick these off when I've done them, so I've done that, and I've added that one. Now C depends only on B, so as soon as B is finished we need to put a node there, pull that one. Now C depends only on B, so C can come out of there. That's C done. Uh, a E depends on A, so when we're here we're at 2. This could have done in, been done in the other order, it doesn't really matter. But E depends only on A, as shown now. Uh, now, here's the first problem, that D depends on A and C finishing. So we need to denote C finishing and A finishing by 3. But to show that that depends on A, we need a dummy. Now we're told in the question that we need exactly two dummies here. So there's that one, we've added D. Uh, and let's put it in. So D depends there. So here it comes. Uh, as soon as E's finished, we reach number four, uh, and now we can put in F and G there. Now this is where it might get a bit messy if I don't think ahead. I might need to redraw this if I did it for proper. There's F. Sorry about it's my hands hurting here. It's a bit of the old arthritis. And this is meant to be G. Okay, now H depends on G finishing. So here I'm going to label this 5 and H. That's H done. I depends on D and F. D finishing and F finishing. And there's a bit of a worry. Uh, G and I. Finishing, oh crikey, it's going to get messy. Alright, so I shouldn't have put F there. Because everything involving F, the only, only thing that depends on F, also depends on D. Mm -hmm. F and D can feed into the same thing, and the other way around. Everything that depends on D depends only on F. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rub this out now. I've thought ahead about that. Mm -hmm. That doesn't need to go there. F can go down here. Now the reason why F and D can both feed into the same vertex without a dummy is because everything that depends on F also depends on D and everything that depends on D also depends on F and the only one that is in that category is I. So I'll label that 6 and I can come off there now. So I only use one dummy which is so far so good. Uh, J depends on G and I. Now here we definitely need a dummy because H depends only on G. So to show that J depends on G and I, we need a dummy to this point 7 from here. So I'd write dummy there and then uh, J depends there and K depends on this. And I'm going to put K up this way. So there's J, there's K. And L depends on H and K, this is the reason why I put K going up there, because now L depends on these two finishing, let's call that 8, and L is there. And then they both feed into the final, finish the project here, which we could label 9. OK, so in answering their question for part A, explain why it's necessary to use at least two dummies when drawing the activity network. The reason why we need two dummies is because D depends on A and C, whereas E only depends on A. So these two bits cause a problem when we need a dummy. And the second dummy is needed because uh, H depends on G, whereas J and K depend on G and I. So this conflict of opinions, this conflict of interest, sorry, where we need the dummies. 
Drone Activity Network using exactly two dummies. This is to make sure that you don't start putting dummies everywhere. Two dummies are the two that we've added there. Sorry if that's a bit of a mess, but it's the best I'm going to do.